Now, of this particular beta blockers, you take the selective beta 1 blockers. You take the selective beta 1 blockers. If you take the selective beta 1 blockers, they include nebivilol, they include metoprolol, esmolol, atenolol, acbutalol, bitoxolol, bisoprolol and as well as seliprolol. These are the selective beta 1 blockers. But the problem with the beta blockers is these beta blockers they will cause bradycardia that is they will cause decrease in the heart rate of the individual right they will cause decrease in the heart rate of the individual in some patients and in such patients what we have to do is we have to use that particular drugs that will possess a partial agonistic activity all right so as such these beta blockers they will cause very severe bradycardia so in those group of patients what we have to do is we should use the beta 1 blockers which are having partial agonistic activity right partial agonistic activity they are preferred now what are those drugs so those drugs which have beta 1 blockade and along with partial agonistic activity those include seliprolol oxprinolol pindalol alprinolol and as well as acbutalol these are beta blockers with intrinsic sympathomimetic activity they will not cause bradycardia but remember all beta blockers they can lead to rebound hypertension on sudden withdrawal after the prolonged use right the problem is rebound hypertension on sudden withdrawal after the prolonged use so this is about your beta blockers next we have another group of drugs which will block alpha receptors and as well as beta receptors and they include combined alpha and beta blockers right they include combined alpha and as well as beta blockers so the drugs under your combined alpha and beta blockers include one is labetilol right one is labetalol and the other one is carvedilol right the other one is carvedilol so remember your labetalol and as well as carvedilol they have antagonistic activity of both alpha and as well as beta adrenergic receptors and where are they used they are mainly used in control of hypertension in pheochromocytoma in pheochromocytoma now remember pheochromocytoma it's a tumor which is originating from adrenal medulla which will release excess amount of epinephrine and norepinephrine in that clinical scenario we use this particular combined alpha and beta blocker mainly labetalol whereas you take this particular carvedilol this carvedilol it is having antioxidant and as well as anti-mitogenic property it is having antioxidant and anti-mitogenic property now because of this antioxidant and anti-mitogenic property these are used or this is used in patients with a congestive heart failure remember this point carvedilol it has antioxidant and anti-mitogenic property and that is the reason why this is useful in the congestive heart failure. So this is about your alpha blockers, beta blockers and alpha and beta blockers. So remember overall these are the group of drugs which will cause sympathoplegia.
right so what we have discussed in the beginning sympathetic nervous system stimulation it plays an important role in the regulation of the blood pressure of the individual so if sympathetic nervous system is excessively stimulated there is excess increase in the blood pressure now you have to reduce the activity of the sympathetic nervous system in patients with hypertension now in what all ways you can do sympathoplegia number one you have to decrease the central sympathetic outflow number two you should block the autonomic ganglia number three you block the release of adrenergic neurotransmitters number four you block the receptors of the adrenergic nervous system in these four ways we can achieve sympathoplegia and thereby the blood pressure of the individual can be reduced